Hi church, I hope you're doing well. I know we all have some odd interests or, or hobbies. One of mine is reading presidential biographies. A few years ago, my wife and I went on vacation with her brother and sister-in-law. They found it hysterical that I lugged around a thousand page paperback biography on President Truman. I responded, I'm on vacation, what else am I gonna do? What struck me in reading and, and deciding what to read is how many biographers really um, venerate their subjects. Some call them hagiographies. In a way, it makes sense. Who's, who's going to write a thousand page bio on Truman and, unless they've already got a strong affinity for, a man, for the man? I'm not complaining. By and large, I enjoy reading about presidents because of the character and fortitude of the individual, not the lack thereof. The reason I mention this is that while certain authors might have this inherent tendency to omit or, or gloss over uncomfortable truths, the biblical authors seem to exhibit no such compunction. Moses didn't sugarcoat his anger, even when it led to killing an Egyptian guard. The story of David's affair with Bathsheba the, and the murder of Uriah is told in 2 Samuel. And, and through the composition of Psalm 51, David ensured it would never be forgotten. Judas was a betrayer, Peter a denier. The disciples, by and large, ran for the hills. And Luke, a traveling companion of Paul, in a, just a few chapters will tell us of Paul's zealous persecution of the church that led to Stephen's martyrdom. It's not just the big failures either. We're told about James and John jockeying for position in the kingdom. The weird detail where John beat Peter in a foot race to the empty tomb, and in Acts 4.13, Peter and John are called unschooled and ordinary men. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with not having that much of an education or, or being all that ordinary. But none of us wants to be labeled that way as if it's the defining feature of who we are. For some, this inclusion might seem odd, particularly if you're writing as a way to get people to embrace your minority religion within a culture schooled on Homer and Plato. Presenting the leaders in your movement as ordinary and unlearned doesn't appear to be a winning strategy, does it? Well, let's look at verse 13. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized they were unschooled and ordinary men, they were astonished. And they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Now, the first thing that Sanhedrin noticed was the disciples' courage, their boldness. They were probably accustomed to a degree of deference in the council. And the disciples, chained or not, were not interested in trying to curry favor with the council. They were there to speak the truth. But beyond that, it seems like it took a moment for them to realize that Peter and John were unschooled and ordinary. As we read, upon the realization, they were astonished and took note, these men had been with Jesus. They were astonished that three years removed from their boats and nets, these fishermen from the backwater of Galilee were going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the supposed wisest thinkers in the land. And Jesus had done his work well. Let's take a moment to, to think about the two qualifications presented in this text. They were filled with the Spirit. We're told that back in verse 8. And they had spent time with Jesus. Which of those two qualifications are you missing? I know it's, it's different. Spending three years following Jesus' every move, listening to his every word, would have been incredible. But we have God's word, which God deemed sufficient to the discipleship task before us. Let us not sell short the power available to us as we focus on Jesus' work and witness mediated through his word. Now, what I'm saying is that in a very real way, we've got access to the same resources as James and John. Does anybody take note that you've been with Jesus? Can anyone in your life tell the difference from when you spent time with him and when you haven't? May we be the kind of people that bear the unmistakable result of time in his presence and of his ongoing presence in us. Have a blessed week, church.